This program is brought to you by the friends and partners of Biblical Life TV. Deep waters to nurture and empower the remnant for the last days. There is a power that is about ready to be released from heaven to those that seek after the things of the kingdom of God. When it comes to the word of God, there is a supernatural unction of the Holy Spirit to learn. God is up to something for those that will study to show yourself approved. Right now there's a lot of things in the kingdom that God is trying to establish that goes against people's theology. You need to understand your roots, where you came from. God may require us to change what we're doing to make walking in the kingdom a higher priority than it ever was before. We were never called to have a little light. We were called to be ablaze with the fire of God in this generation. Join the remnant from around the world who are empowered by the Word of God to fulfill God's purpose in these last days. God is speaking something different. That is going to be essential in the days ahead, and that's part of this anointing that we have to have. Prepare yourselves for spirit-filled teaching. Biblical Life TV. Six point six six hertz, which will still travel up through the body, and it will appear in the mind just like if it was the voice of God. And if I'm so tuned in to six point six six and not enough tuned into seven point eight three, you're not going to survive what's coming on the earth. That's why the correction is necessary. The more holiness that I'm walking in because I'm living according to this book, empowered by the Holy Spirit walking in the commandments of God, the more that I do that, the more I'm tuned into His frequency, and I do not want to have to have God yell. I want to be able to hear Him whisper, and I can hear His voice over the din of the earth. Because you could be traveling down the road at 70 miles an hour, and the Holy Spirit says, you better pull over. And how many, if you don't, you may come around a corner and meet something you don't want to meet. That has happened to many of a man of God that have testimony. John Alexander Dowie actually uh, shares about how God told him to pull over on the, on the curb on the other side of the road. And so he did. It was right before a big curb. And when he came around, within seconds, a semi was over both lanes and he would have had nowhere to go if he had not done that at that moment. Oh, let me tell you something. Holiness, there's great benefit to holiness. There are two great mysteries. The mystery of iniquity and the mystery of godliness or holiness. And if you're going to walk in a mystery, how about walking in the mystery of holiness and godliness? Because Jesus is that mystery personified. Do you want to know how Jesus was able to walk out of the midst of people trying to kill him and no one even could touch him? Holiness. Holiness. If he had got in the flesh in that moment, that would have been a whole different thing. But aren't you glad that he doesn't succumb to the flesh? Mm. Let's go on now. Verse 11. Now no chastising seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, and so there's... there's what we're getting ready to go into next, that therefore, whenever you see a therefore in the word, stop and find out why it's therefore. Because you get this, then you can have this. But without the correction, you're never going to get the next verse. The next verse. Therefore, strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble needs and make pass straight for your feet so that that which is lame will not be dislocated, but rather healed. Why is there not more healing in the body of Christ? Because we have not allowed the Lord to chastise us, to correct us. And if God is not correcting us, He can't straighten out our path. And the very way that we that were walking in many churches, and I, I read a, a wonderful article by Mario Murillo this week, where he was talking about how that the modern church programs the new believer to backslide. And I thought it was spot on. We teach them to go to sleep. 
Did you know your service to God is not what you do when you come in here? Or watch the video on YouTube or on live streams TV. It doesn't matter. This, this is the filling station. It's like the pit stop in the middle of the race. And then you get out of the pit stop and you go to the concession stand because you think, I've already done my bit. No, you were supposed to get fueled up to get back in the race. And then you wonder why that checker flag never comes down for you going across the line first. It's because you got out of the race. But as God corrects, we begin establishing paths to walk in. And those paths are in such a way they naturally, by the course of walking them out, will bring healing. Oh, come on. And instead, it's causing people to trip the way that a lot of the church has been doing it. Now look at this, verse 14. Pursue peace with all people and holiness, without which no one will see God. Looking carefully, lest any fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up causes trouble, and this by many become defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, who for a morsel of food sold his birthright. For you know that afterward, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place for repentance, though he sought it diligently with tears." Do you know there are some people that they can cross a line, that they can cry all day long and never find repentance? Esau did. That's why we need to embrace the correction now. Don't cross the line and never expect to get back over. But guys, we, we, there's a lot going on in the body that grieves my heart. Not, not here locally, but what I see, because God has called us to a national and international with what we're doing, that I, I see social media, and I see the repeat of the Pharisees in the modern church today. You know, when you're, you're competing, and you have, what, close to a billion websites on the internet, and you can listen. Everybody's trying to come up with a new thing, the new thing, the sparkly thing, the thing that ferrets will run after. How many freckles are on the nose of the Antichrist? And oh, by the way, I found out that that one freckle became a wart. Whoa! Or just get in, in, into such peripheral stuff that's not about walking in kingdom and build a platform on it. That's, that's what the Pharisees would do. That they, there was such a den. You know, it used to be only Levites could teach the word prior to Malachi because they were judged for teaching the people what they wanted to hear instead of what they needed to hear, which we're repeating today, by the way. And so much of the church, when you look at demographics, instead of hitting your knees and say, Holy Ghost, what do you want shared? You see, my job is not to build a platform. My job is not to worry about the offering plate. My job is not to worry about how many followers I have on YouTube. My job is to hear what he says, and I got to faithfully articulate that. And I can't let what everybody else wants to change what I share because I could be listening to goats instead of sheep. I found out goats can tithe. Nah, yeah. In fact, they can be daddy big bucks if they think they control what the preacher says or this, that, and the other. They like to be on the steering committee. Let me tell you something. The steering committee is the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And if he isn't steering, you will shipwreck. Well, that's not in my notes. I need to... I'm having fun today. But we have so many that, that base their, their ministries on either a new sparkly are arguing with people. That's what the Pharisees did. They would try to one-up because it was how that you could put somebody into a verbal trap that gave you the position in Jesus' day. You know, I, I always thought that all the rabbis were like Paul. He came from an aristocratic type of family. So he was fluent. He, he could read Hebrew. He could read Aramaic. He could read Greek. He could read Latin. Highly educated. But I was reading one, uh, one research by a, 
a internationally respected rabbi teaching at the seminary level. And he said during that period, uh, he was talking about the second temple period because they kind of ignored Jesus. But he said that the reason why we have rabbi so-and-so said, rabbi so-and-so said, rabbi so-and-so said, because many of the rabbis were illiterate in that day. So if you would have handed them a Torah scroll, they could not even have read it. They had to memorize what somebody else said, somebody else said, somebody else said. And that's the foundation of Talmud, by the way. But it was all this competing and fighting for position and how many followers you have. Those of you who know me know I don't care. <laughs> I'm preaching the same way when I had one follower and it was me because I had to register with the site. I don't care. My job is never to make you happy. My job is to make him happy. And how I conduct myself during that is just as important as the word that I say. The Apostle Paul warns us, this is in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 23 through 26. And it's on the prefaces of this that he had people causing trouble, people that were unlearned, that were teaching the fledgling church that the second resurrection had already happened. And it was causing them to lose faith. And they were extremely argumentative about it. They would love to argue for hours about it, confusing all those that resurrected with Jesus as the second resurrection. And so Paul comes in and he gives Timothy some advice about correcting this situation. But look what he says here in verse 23. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they do generate strife. In his advice to Titus, he even went as far as to say, quit arguing about all the various points of the law. Because they were getting into mental gymnastics the same way that the Pharisees did and made it so complicated that nobody could live it when the law of God is easy to live. The flesh and man make it hard. Just the truth. He said, don't argue over that. Just teach them how that Jesus lived the commandments of God and you do the same thing and, and you'll be okay. Jesus is the interpreter of the commandments of God. You want to find out how to do what Moses told you? Read the Gospels. See it in motion. But listen to this, but the servant of the Lord must not quarrel. Whether on Facebook, I'm reading from the super modern translation. Whether on Facebook whether on YouTube, Vimeo, Instagram, Instachat, or any other mode of media. You don't argue, you don't quarrel. What do you do? You got to be gentle to all. Oh, man. Able to teach patient in, you, in humility correcting when you come to correct another believer, especially if you're in ministry, you better make sure that you do it in humility. I remember years ago, I, God gave me a prophetic word for somebody that if they didn't turn their life around, they were going to lose everything. And I mean, I was so nervous, I almost threw up as I was sharing it with everybody wants to share a good word. Oh, God's going to bless you. Man, if you don't, I don't know what you're doing, but if you don't straighten out, you're going to lose everything you have. I mean, I was shaking in my boots all the way over there when I drove to his house, and I was shaking in my boots all the way back. Because I'm thinking, dear God, if God can give a word like that to somebody, I wonder what's waiting in the wings for me. In humility. Because all of us can stray, and all of us need correction at times. But when we do it in humility, he goes on to say, if God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth. Now, Listen to the rest of this. Okay, they're argumentative. They're needing correction. They may twist Scripture, and they may like to argue about their position for hours and hours and hours and hours, and usually it's about things that don't matter. If it's not about the walk, if it's not about Jesus, if it's not about moving in the power of God, I don't care. 
There are some arguments out there people wanting to get into. And I'm, I'm like my friend John Hall. You know, he, he, was, he was a, a, uh, a emergency a trauma nurse where if you don't make the right decision and you're, you're focused like this, if you don't, the people die. And so a lot of this peripheral stuff, you just ignore. You know, it's like, yeah, he's, well, we got to do something. He's bleeding over here, but that's a small cut. I want to deal with the gaping hole in his chest over here, okay? Forget about that one. That one will take care of itself. And so when they present a lot of these arguments to him, he looks him in the eyes and says, I don't care. It's not a major thing. It's, 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 it's not, it's not what, what God's speaking right now. It's not about what we should be doing. It's not going to make a hill of beans difference when the Antichrist shows up. And it's not going to matter when Bible prophecy begins to unfold. So why are we wasting all that time? Another spirit. But he goes on to say, in verse 26, now listen to this, that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. There's a lot of things, people, when they get into an argumentative spirit, they are spreading false things, and they're not doing the will of the Father. They're doing the will of Satan himself. And they're causing people to stumble. There are some arguments out there that if they would put half as much effort into proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, we can have the whole world saved and just go on home now. I'm serious. But no, it's this little thing that we have. And they got to pull snippets from here, there, and, and from Nimrod's underwear. I don't know where all they pull it from. And when it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't even qualify as a minor doctrine of the Word of God. All it shows is the scientific thought of the day for people that couldn't probably travel over 100 miles their entire lifetime. Never had a telescope, wouldn't know what a binocular, set of binoculars were. Or some other thing. Come on now, guys. If it's not producing holiness in the people... If it's not producing righteousness. Well, I got, I got eight minutes. I got to go. Okay. Let's go back to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 25 through 29, because this is where we're headed. Now, one of the things when you deal with prophetic words, you have the perfect fulfillment of it. But you will also, through time space or through time itself, you will have many ripples of that same thing happening because it's the fingerprint of God. Because God has patterns in which he follows. And he does that for stupid people like me that I can say, oh, that was God, I can see the pattern. Okay? And sometimes it'll be from generation to generation, but then you will have the final fulfillment of that. See that you not refuse him who speaks, for they did not escape, he refused him who spoke on earth. Much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven. Now, what's he warning them about? Moses told them to cross over the Jordan. And they said, heck no, we won't go. Made false accusations against God. God's just taking us over there so our little kids will get killed. And God says, you know what? You're going to die in the wilderness as them little kids are going to raise up and they're going to take the land, Jack. Insulting the integrity of God because of fear. Or some personal means. And... Uh, we need to understand that though the Jewish people that rejected Jesus at the time of Jesus is because he did not fulfill their expectation of what they thought that he should do when he came. They were demanding Messiah ben David and their, and their eyesight didn't go beyond the Roman Empire. Today, our understanding of Jesus is so distorted that we're about to make the same mistake in a lot, a lot of the church. The fifth gospel is the book of Revelation. It's the revealing of Jesus. That's what apocalypse means, the revelation, the revealing of Jesus. And who is it revealed to? His bondservants, not to the world. You don't show the world as, as, as all hell begins to break loose. You don't say, won't you turn to Revelation chapter 4? It's for us to read now because we have fallen so 
far short of the mark over 2,000 years, our distortion of who Jesus is. He is not a beach hippie on a surfboard thinking, just do what you want, it's all cool. We see who he is. John, the one that as a young man heard the heartbeat of God that when they, when they had the Last Supper, he leaned over and could hear the heartbeat of God. That same John, I know Jesus. I know Jesus. I spent my formative years with Jesus. And now as an old man, when he sees Jesus as he is now, he falls like a dead man. Overcome by the glory and the power and the majesty. That's the Jesus that we're having to deal with now. We're dealing with Messiah ben David now. He is a king that will judge anything that doesn't line up with him. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. So let's make sure that we line up with his expectation because your expectation is like an ice cube melting in hell. That's about as much chance as it has surviving. It's his opinion, who he is. He's the judge. You're not. And you better find out, what do you expect? Give me a revelation of who you are so that it will heal my walk now and it will get me out of the slumber that is of the world so that I can shake the dust of Babylon off my feet and walk out never to return again. Mm. Then he goes on to say, For they did not escape him who spoke on earth. How much more will we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth? How many know when God spoke at Mount Sinai, it shook the earth? So much so that all of Israel pushed Moses out in front of him and said, God, you talk to him. (laughs) And then you tell him what you want and we will do what he says. But he goes on to say, but now he has promised, saying, yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. We see that unfolding in the book of Revelation. There's another war coming in heaven, guys. It's outlined in the Word of God. To where Michael is sent, and he does war with the dragon, and by that time, all the angels and immortals that have, that have aligned themselves with him are going to get thrown down into first heaven realities. They're not going to be the puppet masters with strings anymore. God is going to fulfill the prophecy He spoke over them in, in Psalms 82. And they're going to be in, there's going to be an incarnation where they're going to walk around and all these masons and everything else that have worshipped them for centuries are going to see the dudes that they've been worshipping. And the Bible says their hearts will fail for fear for what's coming upon the earth. Yeah, it's falling out of the heavens. There's a shaken coming. How do you survive that? Well, I'm glad you asked. He goes on to say, he says, Now this yet once more indicates the removal of all things that can be shaken, as of things which are made, that those things that cannot be shaken may remain. Get so founded founded in God and who Jesus is in the Word of God that nothing shakes you. Because that kingdom cannot be shaken. Therefore, since we have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us have grace. Have you asked for grace, ever asked for the grace of God to walk in the kingdom? We need to. God, give me grace to walk in that kingdom that cannot be shaken. By which may we serve him acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. You know, with what's coming, there's fire coming. And you can be like the hay, wood, and stubble that gets consumed by the fire. You can be gold, silver, and precious stone that the hotter the fire, the purer it becomes. And that's the task of the church today. That is the task of where we are at. And we need to start asking God for the supernatural grace to walk in His kingdom alone. We need to throw off this modern Christianity that is sending souls to hell. I think we have churches full of unbelievers. And those unbelievers control what goes on the pulpit. And if you get enough unbelievers together to fill a stadium, then you can begin setting the prototype that every other ministry tries to follow. 
and you have sheep running to play with the goats. I like what John Hagee said, the only thing you can do with a goat is have a barbecue. That's the only way you can bless the body. And from this, there's a barbecue coming. But at the same time, we need to understand that there's anointing going to be released as God speaks that's going to be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That that fire, you're going to have the fourth man in the fire with you because you're in a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And the only thing that's going to burn off is what keeps you in bondage. That when you get on the other side, you're free. And whom the Son has set free is free indeed. There's nothing that mystery religions can do to stop what God's getting ready to speak and do in the earth. Now, Father, we thank you for it. Father, we just ask that you'd give us grace. Give us grace, Father, to walk in that kingdom that cannot be shaken. And Father, we make the choice, the heart choice right now. I'm going to hear him who speaks from heaven. And if it requires me to change everything, I'm going to change it. Because I need to come in line with the kingdom in this day and this hour. And we thank you and we praise you for it. In Jesus' name. The fallen immortals that rule the kingdom of darkness have enabled the esoteric societies that control this world to nearly fulfill Nimrod's dark directive. They have taken society down the Luciferian rabbit hole into a technological matrix of darkness. But the Almighty will not allow the enemy to bring his demonic forces for the final showdown without raising up one of his own. God is waking up people around the world who are shaking off their techno-sorcery-induced spiritual slumber and are answering Heaven's call. There is an end-time empowerment coming for God's remnant, and it is beginning to unfold in our day. It is time to awaken be empowered and become the Sheerith in this generation. The Sheerith Imperative is a must-have tactical manual for God's remnant in the last days. Get your copy at KingdomIntelligenceBriefing.com. That's KingdomIntelligenceBriefing.com. Hell may have its directive, but heaven has its imperative. Thank you for watching Biblical Life TV. We hope and pray that today's program edified you in the Word of God. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the Kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.